Hello, guys. Um, <laughs> my name is Oleg, and I'm working in Zybex. And today I have such interesting, but at the same time, quite huge topic. Let's discuss how Zybex uh, manages different tasks. So today I will talk about such simple diagram. Um, yep. I've tried to, let's say, uh, simplify it as much as possible. I do believe it's not possible even to read such, let's say, notes. But when you'll get, let's say, such slides after the, let's say, sometime several weeks, uh, maybe they will help you to recall some um, answers on the questions as well. Uh, the possible question is, <laughs> why do we need such, let's say, uh, information at all? The answer is simple. Um, in case of an issue, if you do have some information how, to, how Zybex, let's say, is working, you'll be able probably to fix it faster. Um, so let's discuss such topic. First of all, let's start from the agenda. I'm talking about the colors. So the blue one, such object, that's database, which Zybex will use. Let's imagine it's MariaDB or maybe PostgreSQL. Uh, the orange one like this, that's a memory. So some area, and Zybex will use such memory to keep some information. What exactly, I will discuss, uh, will describe later. Also, we do have such guys. So green means it's uh, some process, uh, internal or ex external. Internal means it will manage some internal tasks, like we'll write down data to database. Uh, external means it will connect uh, somewhere outside of Zybex to get some information. Uh, such color means we do have some, let's say, process behind such object. It means that we have even more, even bigger picture. So let's start from the uh, beginning. So let's imagine I will start Zybex. Like uh, systemstl start Zybex server. First of all, configuration syncer will connect the database to grab configuration. It will grab information about items, trigger functions, and will use configuration cache to keep all that stuff. Also, it will connect to database every one minute by default, and uh, will perform some changes. So if I'll add a new item, I will get that change in the configuration cache, let's say in a moment. Um, the next topic which I'd like to discuss is this one. So let's talk about data collection. So now I do have some, let's say, tasks uh, in the configuration cache. Like I need to check memory usage every one minute, uh, let's say, CPU load every five minutes. I will use Zabbix to monitor some log files. So I have such, let's say, tasks in the uh, memory. So now I will, let's say, explain such object, and we do have such diagram here as well. Um, that's that small area. Um, and uh, as you can see, Zabbix uses different processes to manage different tasks. For example, if you need to get data from SNMP or Zabbix agent, it will use Polar. If I need to get the data, let's say, from uh, a web page, I would like to use web metering, it will use HTTP Polars. Uh, ICMP for ICMP checks. Uh, Java to get data via GMX. So Zabbix will use specific processes to manage specific tasks. So we're talking about data collectors. All of them uh, will use configuration cache to get uh, some details, to get, uh, let's say, queue of the tasks. So for example, Polar will check configuration cache, and uh, if you need to check, let's say, CPU load for some device, it will connect to that device and will get that value. Um, all these processes won't use database directly. No, they will use uh, data preprocessing, which we'll discuss in a moment. They will, let's say, pass the values to that guy. Um, if I'm thinking about APMI, it has a bit different logic. So such process has, uh, let's say, we do have IPMI manager and uh, IPMI pullers as well. So such one will use configuration cache to get information about the tasks. Also, it will keep information about which puller to use to, let's say, uh, ask about a value from that specific IPMI uh, device. And uh, in such way, it will pass such task to the process, and they will manage the uh, data collection task. Also, you can see Polar has some, let's say, um, extra tasks as well. For example, if I think about VMware Collector, Polar, Polar will manage, will help, let's say, to uh, get such data. First of all, it will use configuration cache to add here information about new SXI hosts and vCenters. And if I'll add a new one, it will get the same information updated here. Uh, VMware Collectors will connect, will use VMware Cache to get information about vCenters and SXI, and will connect to our uh, VMware environment uh, directly. So we'll use VMware API to get some data. Uh, such process will use uh, separate call to get configuration and separate call to get performance data as well. Um, also, Polar will manage 
uh, will manage internal monitoring cache. So all of the process will use uh, monitoring cache, internal monitoring cache to keep information about busy or sleep state. So it means you can uh, use internal items and uh, that cache and pullers as well to get details about process load. So in such a way, uh, we'll get information like uh, history thinkers are heavy loaded or not. We do have enough free uh, space for configuration cache or not. Uh, but again, to, when, we'll get, then when they will get some data, they will use uh, preprocessing. So they will pass such values to a different process, which we'll discuss in a moment. In some situations, uh, some of the process will use database directly. I'm talking about such process like uh, IPMI manager, Polar, uh, Java, and uh, Unreachable, not only. You can see here are such process. So when they will use database directly? If we'll say uh, uh, we'll get some data from an agent and it was marked as unreachable before. So Polar will connect to database and will update that status in database directly. So again, there are some use cases when process will connect database directly, but it's not again, not about the uh, data collection. So let's imagine we do have some values here. Um, and uh, before we'll discuss it, we do have, let's say, one more possible station. Let's imagine I'm using the big proxy to monitor some device. Um, the logic is almost the same. We'll see just a bit different process. So if I will use active proxy, uh, Trapper will manage incoming connections. So it will pass configuration data and also will manage incoming data from the active proxy. If I'll use passive proxy, Proxy polar such internal process will connect to Zabbix proxy, will send configuration data, and will connect, let's say, every one second to get uh, performance data. Uh, they will use configuration cache and database to grab configuration and send to the proxy. They will use data preprocessing, let's say, um, group, uh, to manage values. They will pass such values to that guy as well. So as you can see, uh, such uh, data collectors won't use database, won't use uh, history cache. In 3.0, the situation is different. I'm talking about 4.0 version. So now let's imagine you do have some objects here, data preprocessing. Let's discuss what you can find there. Uh, when uh, preprocessing manager, that's the main process which will manage information, uh, will get some values. First of all, it will check for the, pos for the existing preprocessing rules. Do we have some? Do we need to, for example, extract some value and store that value in a different way? Maybe we need to apply some multiplier or maybe some changes as well. So again, it will uh, check for all uh, these uh, preprocessing steps. Also, it will check for dependent items as well. So such process, preprocessing manager, will use these guys to manage such task. They will apply some changes and will send value back. Preprocessing manager will use history cache to write down such values. So if there are some changes, if it's necessary to perform some preprocessing steps, they will manage these tasks and will write down values to the history cache. If there are no such, let's say, requirements, maybe I just get in CPU load, no preprocessing steps at all, uh, they will just pass the uh, value or values to the history cache. Um, now we do have some data in the uh, history cache here. So this process will get some data, maybe proxy will send, they will pass information to data preprocessing, and we'll get it here. For now, we're talking about memory. So I won't be able to find such values in database for now. And uh, we do have a process, probably the most critical process in Zybex architecture, which will manage the incoming data. History syncers will connect to the, uh, let's say we'll use uh, history cache to grab values. History syncers will write down such values into database, but also they will manage quite a lot of additional tasks as well. For example, uh, they will calculate trends. So each time when you'll get numeric value, like CPU load, a history syncer will update uh, trends for that item. We'll keep minimum, maximum, average, and count in the memory, and every one hour, let's say approximately every one hour, will write down such values into database trends. Um, such processes, history syncers, uh, will update host inventory. Maybe uh, I'm getting, let's say, device location. Once per hour, so such process will get a new value, they'll say, oh, I need to use such inventory field, will populate such inventory field. Uh, they will calculate IT services as well. They will check trigger expressions. They will generate problems. We'll check all of the correlation rules as well. If it's necessary, we'll apply, we'll close some of the problems. And uh, if it's necessary, again, we'll add all these problems uh, in the database. Also, history thinkers will check our actions. 
they will create tasks for escalators. So in the database, uh, history thinker will check action, and if, let's imagine I have an action, like send email message, it will create the required task for the escalator. Um, let's imagine some application is done. Maybe CPU is high. So let's imagine we do have some new problems in Zabbix database. Uh, such, let's say, a uh, group of the process will manage these problems, these new problems, or maybe all problems like recovery message. So what do we do have uh, behind that object? Um, we do have several plots. First of all, we do have escalator and uh, editor manager. So this process will connect to database to grab information about new tasks. Like, do we need to send the mail message? Maybe I need to send the SMS or execute some remote command to, let's say, fix an issue. Um, it depends on the action itself. Uh, we can use different, uh, let's say, actions in Zabbix. We can send SMS, email, we can use some custom script. I can use IPMI to execute some remote command. So it depends on the action type, uh, which process will manage such task. Um, if I will use, let's say, Zabbix to send uh, SMTP notifications, like email message, or uh, I have a GM, GSM gateway, we'll send SMS. Uh, Zabbix will use alter manager, which will ask these process to manage such tasks. So such one will check database for a new tasks. Oh, I need to send email. It will just send such task to the process. And the uh, alter will send email message to me. Um, if I have some, let's say, uh, remote command, I would like to fix an issue automatically. If there is an issue, connect to SSH and uh, run some command, like restart Apache or VIPMI, do something. So if it's like uh, IPMI command, SSH, et cetera, so Zabbix will use escalators. So these process will uh, manage such commands. So again, it depends on the command type and architecture as well. As you can see, they will use configuration cache to get configuration about items, and also uh, they will use uh, configuration cache to get information to resolve the macros itself. So it means that such process will do uh, such operations, like will use some uh, IPMI connection to execute some command, or it will add a required task for such one. Uh, it's an email notification or SMS. It will add task for alter manager, and it will check, will pass it here, and let's say it will, it will send SMS or uh, email notification. Uh, also, escalator will use value cache. In such way, it will get values for the macros and will resolve them and will pass information to the uh, alter manager via database. Um, if, you'll, if you'll get back, let's say, to the previous slide for a moment, you won't be able to find here the BWatch dog. So in 3.0 version, there is a DBH dog uh, process uh, which will check database. So every, let's say, uh, one minute, as you can recall, it will connect to database to check. It is reachable or not. It will just connect to the port. Uh, and uh, now you won't be able to, such pro to find such process. Such process will check database connectivity. So now we have no database watchdog, but again, as before, uh, alter manager will cache the emails for admin. Admins, I can define where to send notification if database is down. And if the database is down, it will use alter to send such notifications. It will use all the possible media types. Like if I will define email, SMS, uh, heap chat messages, it will try to send all these notifications about databases down, databases down, et cetera. And it will send such message every 15 minutes. So if I'm talking about such slide, uh, at least briefly, I try to explain, let's say, um, the Zabbix background logic from the first start command, like in such way, configuration cache, then data collection, monitoring, let's say, uh, Pre-processing and pricing data, generation of problems and uh, and notifications. Uh, but we do have some um, additional objects. I am talking about uh, such one and uh, let's say these several. So let's discuss them. I will start from timer. So timer will manage uh, maintenance. So if I'll define such task, I would like to enable maintenance for my uh, device from such period for one hour only. Timer will enable maintenance for the host and will disable maintenance after some time. Uh, task manager will manage tasks. For example, I can uh, open the big front end. I can click um, check now for an item. And the front end will use database to keep such task. Uh, task manager will check database, will get, let's say, details about tasks, and uh, will pass, uh, will, will perform such check, will get, let's say, value for an item. Uh, also, it will manage such tasks like um, if it will resolve some problem manually. 
it will update, will perform some changes in the database as well. Uh, such one, we need to clean up Zybex database. So Zybex will use Housekeeper to uh, clean up Zybex database. I can define how long I would like to keep information, like uh, history for 30 days, uh, problem events for one year, and uh, Housekeeper will clean up them after the specific period of time. Uh, please mind that you can use such process for MySQL, Postgre, Oracle, etc. databases. If I'll use Elasticsearch, I won't be able to use Housekeeper. So I have to find, let's say, a different way how to clean up Elasticsearch database. Uh, also, we do have such, let's say, data collector process. Uh, you already saw such process on the previous slide uh, in, in this group. So Zabbix will use such process to listen for incoming connections. So if proxy will push data, if Zabbix agent in active mode will send some values, uh, this process will get information, will manage the incoming data. Uh, also, if I'll use frontend, for example, to check you, Zabbix frontend will connect to that guy as well to check you, to get information about you. Uh, if I'll use frontend scripts as well, so that process will manage such request also. Uh, let's imagine I'm using auto registration. Um, I can configure Zabbix agents to send uh, auto registration requests and uh, some uh, useful information like installed application, etc. Uh, so Trapper will manage such incoming requests. If there is a new, uh, let's say, host, it will check database for an action, like it's a new host, yes, I do have after registration action, it will perform all the required changes in database directly. We'll add a new host, link some templates, we'll put such host to, I don't know, two host groups. And uh, probably the last one from the list. Um, Zabbix will use such process to perform some network discovery rules. If I have at least one, such process will manage such discovery rule. It will scan some IP range, IP range it will check for the services which I'll define, and uh, will perform required changes. If I'll add an action, it will use database directly to, perf to add all the required hosts, to apply some templates, and uh, change, let's say, host groups, and so on. That's all. Just briefly about process. It's not enough. If uh, we need to, let's say, discuss in the way, we can discuss even more. Uh, but yep, uh, just briefly, that's all. So guys, any questions about Zabbix processes? No questions, thanks. Ah, no, 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 no. Wait a second, my dear friend. Thank you for your presentation. So I believe one of the most interesting questions from our community, uh, will those detailed charts be, be a part of the official documentation? Hmm? Uh, the question is good. And uh, if you think about the expert new course, uh, you'll see a such slide probably even more and uh, a bit more details. Now we're quite limited in time. And uh, even if I'll try to explain, let's say, in a detailed way, it's quite tricky. So what I'm talking about, you'll see some additional information for the expert, but not sure about documentation. I do believe we will public share such information at some point. Uh, not sure. Okay, thank you. Uh, uh, let me add from my side that the presentations will be published. So this presentation will be available on our website. Yes, at least you can find some notes. Maybe they will help you to fix an issue or at least understand Zabbix background logic or drop a message to the Oleg. Uh, another question, uh, when it is advised to move uh, from the housekeeping to the partitioning? Um, it's not, let's say, related to such topic, but let's discuss uh, such option. It depends, and depends uh, on database size, depends on the hardware as well, uh, storage, memory available, etc. But normally you have, let's say, at least uh, several uh, possible symptoms, so let's say signals, when you need to migrate. Uh, the possible signal is uh, high load. If you can see like Zybex uh, is slow when Housekeeper is up and running, that's the signal. If it's, let's say, just for a moment, that's maybe okay. If it's, let's say, for an hour or maybe one day, that's a signal. And also, if, let's say, you need to install uh, Zybex for a customer, and uh, you will use that formula from our documentation, like you can, uh, let's say, calculate database size, at least approximately. Um, so if you'll see, like, your database size 
more than 100 gigabytes, 200 gigabytes, maybe one terabyte, of course you must enable uh, partitioning and replace it with, uh, let's say use it instead of housekeeper. So, but you'll see, normally like <laughs> if it's a time, you will see it for sure. It's not possible to miss it, no way. Thank you, and then the last one. Uh, uh, let's say community not quite sure if you mentioned that, but does Trapper sends data to pre-processing? Let's get back to that slide. Yes, yes. Uh, we're talking about the previous slide, uh, this one. So as any other process, it, won't, it was just, let's say, an example for auto-registration. Uh, I just tried to highlight that Trapper will do some extra tasks as well. But as you can see, when you will get uh, Trapper, when you will get, uh, uh, yep, here. When you will get some values, let's say, from an active agent, maybe from an active proxy, it will use uh, preprocessing manager to, again, pass such values to it. Yes, it will use it. Thank you. I believe that's it from our side, so. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you for the questions from the application, and we have questions from the audience. Hey, Oleg. Yes. Um, uh, about the data collection, okay? Uh, before, uh, I don't remember if uh, until the 3.2, uh, I, I, don't, I don't have the pre-process, uh, mm -hmm. okay? And uh, before, uh, when the polar or train received the data collected, uh, sent directly to history cache, right? Yes, that's true for 3.0. Okay. But from 3.2, we have that, let's say, extra process for such task. Okay, but uh, right now, uh, when the, the, the data is collected and received by Trapper, for example, uh, we'll send to prep processing. Uh, okay, to to verify if you have the dependent eating mm -hmm. or item or something else. The point is, without a cache, without a cache, where, where the Zabbix will store the value uh, collected before be pre-processed. Because uh, my my point is. If I have received a lot of uh, information in the same time uh, by Polar, that is not, uh, that's not use a history cache, for example. That's the point, is, is because I, I'm looking forward to, to, to configure my, uh, the memory of my Zabbix server or anything else. So where, uh, where I can need to turn in to don't affect the Zabbix server? Uh, it's not possible to, let's say, change, change some parameter to, let's say, increase sounds like, no. It will pass, let's say, Polar will pass that information to the process directly. And again, we did some tests and uh, it, it works really fast. It, it, let's say, even about data collection, Zabbix can manage huge amount of incoming data in time. Some overhead, it's like processing triggers, problems, actions, etc. But uh, you have no such option which you can use, let's say, somehow to manage the number of Okay, do you know uh, that uh, had a, uh, a bug that fixed uh, where I can uh, get a lot of information from database monitoring and this, when I receive a, a, a lot of information, uh, the Zabbix server uh, break it down. So it's fixed right now, but that's the point. Uh, I would like to improve this number, the, the size, to, to don't affect the Zabbix server. Um, you are probably talking about an issue on this side. When you'll send, let's say, a huge amount of data because of the list of tasks, we need to write history and calculate trends, we need to check triggers expression, we need to perform some correlation, we need to generate problems, execute actions, etc. So normally in 3.0 version, if you'll send a huge amount of data, you might get an issue, let's say, on such uh, side. So they won't be able to process data fast enough. And uh, in 4.0, you won't be able to see any changes here. Zybex 4.0, there are some performance improvements, but again, you won't be able probably to overload such guy, but it's still possible that, let's say, because of such huge expression, complex logic, dependencies as well, tags, uh, it will take some time to manage all this data collection, but it's not like probably don't, let's say, uh, focus on, sorry, on, on this one. It's, it's not, I, I don't see here any possible reasons, at least for now, I don't think. Okay, thank you. We have more question in the... Okay. 
Okay. Hello, thank you. I have uh, two questions. First question about uh, configuration cache. Uh, will you plan uh, somewhere to start incremental update of configuration cache? So it will uh, become incremental and very fast. Um, I'm not sure about this. Uh, if we can address such question to our developer, Alexander, or maybe someone else. Um, I'm not sure. I can recall that Zybex will, let's say, uh, perform some changes only, but not sure it's for configuration cache or for... I mean, in this case, uh, button check metric will be work. Uh, at the moment, we create new metric, not after configuration. Uh, if you're talking about the uh, configuration of the interval, uh, we have no, let's say, uh, plans to change at least for now. Uh, Zybex uh, will use such process to uh, update configuration cache with some interval. But if you're talking about, let's say, to grab changes only, again, I need to double check. Uh, maybe it's already implemented. I, I just need to double check. Okay, I and second something. question. Yes. Uh, as I know, you, uh, your internal monitoring, it's separated by, by polars. Yes. Uh, and... Uh, somewhere, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And uh, will we be some when be able to collect that data performance, internal data, remotely? No, there is no way. Uh, even right thinking now, about no, you about law uh, remotely, um, but you can use uh, you can define let's say your internal items. You can use API to get values for them. Or what are you talking about remotely? remotely if you would like to from, let's say, from, other, from other Zabbix server, I can collect internal uh, metrics ah, only ah. by this Zabbix. And if my Zabbix have a problem, I can see these problems on uh, graphs. No changes here as well. So yep. Uh, not possible to get such data remotely. Uh, you can use some items to yep, collect such data, but during the issue, you won't be able to use it because, yeah, because that's an issue. Are, are you planning to something to do? Uh, um, I can't recall such, let's say, uh, task in the roadmap. Probably not. Not, not for 4.2. Yeah. 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 Any more questions? Questions. Oh, yeah. Sorry, just one. They are um, coming. Yes, please. Um, do you have an idea why um, trends are not supported in Elasticsearch? Why trends are not supported? It was just a decision. It's not like a bug. It was just implemented such a way. So when you will use uh, Elasticsearch, yep, Zabbix won't uh, calculate trends for uh, numeric data. And uh, when you'll open some uh, view, like simple custom graph, it will just grab required data. Probably, uh, it depends on the selected period, but Zabbix will perform some, let's say, aggregation as well. will display average, minimum, et cetera, but that's, that's architecture. Okay. It's not like, like a bug is Zabbix, no. It's yes. expected. Any issues to that? Yes, and just nearby the question. Yes, please. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, the question about trapper process that receive uh, information from uh, Zabbix agent in active mode or in on or from Zabbix sent utility, uh, it reply with code if this receiving data was yes. successful or not. Uh, in this configuration, when uh, pre-processing was added, does it mean that it replied to sender before uh, this data was processed by pre-processing process? No, as I can recall, it will check, will wait for the transaction itself. Ha, huh. the question is good. I, I is, should double check. Is it possible that uh, Zabbix agent, for example, sent some data to Trapper. Trapper replies, it's okay, I uh, moved this data to pre-processing queue, but in pre-processing stage, uh, some error occurred. I have no answer, sorry. The question is good. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Oh, okay, 
Thank you for the tricky questions. Do we have any more That's tricky always. questions? <laughs> so, I don't see any hands raised, so let this tricky question be the last one for Oleg today. Thank you, guys. Thank you.